Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Lori Hartshorn. And I'm Brian Warner. We're so excited that you've joined us today. You know, we all have struggles from time to time, whether it be sickness, stress, or anxiety. No matter what you're facing today, you have the ultimate weapon to overcome it. It's called prayer. And all this week on the 700 Club Canada, we're focusing on prayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'll see powerful stories of men and women like you who overcame the odds because of prayer. Lori, you get an opportunity to go to a lot of conferences, speaking to all types of congregations. Why don't people pray? Honestly, Brian, I think it's the same reason sometimes why I don't pray. Okay. We're too busy. Ah. And we're too busy caught up solving maybe things ourselves, mm. right? Mm. What about you? What do you think? I think we overcomplicate it. Mm. And you know, um, I've seen a lot of people who believe that I have to pray just right or mm. I can't pray at all. Right. And I think really what we end up doing is we have the paralysis of analysis. And because we try to analyze it so much, we just don't have a conversation with God. And that's it. It's a conversation with God, right? Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure there's people even watching, maybe you don't have a relationship with God and maybe you feel afraid to pray or mm -hmm. disqualified to pray, right? Yeah. Lots of reasons why we don't pray. So many, but we hope we dispel all of that today. So today we hope you You'll join us by asking God to intervene in all of our lives. And we have two incredible stories that prove what can happen when we allow God to act on our behalf. And later, we'll be joined by Pastor Sam Tita, who has seen the power of prayer change lives mm -hmm. through his outreach ministry called Prayer Wave. It's amazing. Now, Sam's going to be sitting down with us to pray with you and for you during our extended week of prayer time later in the program. But first, this is how Steve was given new life by the power of prayer. Fascinating. Watch. On February 11th, 2008, Barbara O'Cycle arrived at the hospital seven minutes early for her shift as an ER nurse. She never anticipated what would happen in those next few minutes. He came in on a stretcher. I did not see his face. I did not see his wife. And I went to the computer to triage him, and they handed me his license. And it said, Steve DeMoss. And I said, oh my god, I know him. Early that year, Steve DeMoss was in great health and traveling frequently to Africa with his ministry called Word Indeed. Steve's wife, Sharon, remembers waking up that morning and finding her husband in distress. He was lying in the bed and grabbed his arm. His color changed totally and he said he was in a lot of pain. And the way he was acting, I thought he had had a stroke. Emergency workers rushed Steve to the hospital where Barbara, their close family friend, was working. I thought, you know, Lord, just tell everybody to pray for him because he's, he might not make this. So we initially got a CT of the head, consulted with neurology, and called the pharmacy to start preparing thrombolytic drugs to treat for an acute stroke. Less than 30 minutes later, his condition had changed. He now had nausea, and vomiting, and a very low blood pressure. That's not consistent with a stroke. It became a very complex case with multiple things that we had to consider. Dr. Hope ordered multiple tests, including a full body scan. The results were alarming. His diagnosis was a, an acute aortic dissection of, of basically the uh, aortic root through the arch of the aorta down through the descending aorta, involving dissections of the vessels off of the aortic arch and the carotid arteries on both sides. These are words that put a chill in anybody who speaks them in the emergency room. You know, he was told there was a 4% chance, really, that with this kind of injury, he could live. Steve's family was called in just before he was rushed to emergency surgery. By that time, they had him totally, he was intubated, he was totally out. And they said, you better call everybody, he's probably not gonna make it, they need to say goodbye. During the surgery, friends and family members decided to hold on to hope despite the odds. There must have been 40 people in the waiting room, and they stayed with us the whole time. And then at one point, everybody gathered in the hallway, and we prayed, like, for quite a while. And I sat next to Stacy, his daughter, and I just felt like I should focus on prayer and praying. And I could close my eyes, and I could look at the operating room, and I saw angels on the ceiling of the operating room. And I held on to Stacy and I said, Stacy, I just feel the angels are in the room with him. And, you know, things are going well. Fifteen minutes later, the surgeon walks out. And I see him out of the corner of my eye, and I know it's got to be bad news because 
it seemed like an impossible amount of time. He came out and he said he made it. Although the surgery was a success, Steve was still in critical condition and in a medically induced coma. But the number of people praying for Steve continued to grow. I can tell you that I know a lot of people were praying for Steve and they were praying all over the world. People would send their prayers on Caring Bridge and I would sit and just read through their prayers. I knew that I was being sustained, that there were people lifting me up and that were carrying me even when I didn't know what I was supposed to do the next step of the way. Doctors told Sharon that Steve needed to wake up from the coma within five days or he would suffer major brain damage. On the fourth day, he was showing no signs of recovery. She called a local church for prayer. They came over immediately and they spent a long time. We worshiped, we prayed together, we held hands, we prayed over him, they anointed him with oil. By the next morning, Steve was awake and had no signs of brain damage. I mean, when I woke up, my wife says, do you realize what just happened? I had all these tubes in me and everything. Then my kids came to me, my daughter and one of my sons, and we, we, we huddled and we realized the worst had passed. I remember just being able to breathe after that, like it was gonna be okay. That was, that was a pretty um, joyful realization that God's restored what we had almost lost. That same afternoon, Steve was walking around the hospital, and he was released just days later. When I woke up, I heard people were praying all over the world. I have friends in Senegal, Uganda. I really believe that the prayers of the people is what brought me back. It was extremely touching for me. It just made me feel like I'm so glad I'm a part of the body of Christ. Within six weeks, Steve was pitching in a softball tournament. And just two months later, he returned to his work in Africa. I feel like a million dollars. I'm in as good or better shape than I was before, before this all happened. The very fact that he, he survived this, let alone survived it without any significant sequelae, such as stroke symptoms or kidney failure or paralysis, is quite remarkable. Um, I don't know um, how you account for him living. Not just living, but he lives well. He lives healthy. And um, I don't know if there's really accounting for it outside of really the work of God in his life. He did recover and it was miraculous. Prayer is also for you as much as it is for the person you're praying for. Every miracle helped me to know that God was with me every step of the way. I just believe that God chose to spare me so that I can testify about how amazing he is and the miracles that he does do. God has done way beyond what anybody could have imagined or I could have imagined, and I, and I believe he can do it for you. You know, I love what Steve said. He said, God saved me that I would testify. And I really believe that he was a living example of God's miraculous power. Not only has he helped so many other lives, but God had a special purpose and a plan for this because six weeks later, I mean, he's now pitching softball and two months later, he's on the mission field. Go God. I don't know what you're facing right now, but I really believe in my spirit that God is saying, according to Ephesians 3.20, and I need you to write this down because it's so critical. I don't know what you're going through, but the Bible says to him who is able able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask, think, or imagine according to the power of God that works within us. You know, this is so critical that we stand on the Word of God because it becomes our anchor where our faith has something to hold on to. And hope is an anchor that can take us through the most difficult storms. You know what happened for Steve and you saw his wife, how she just summoned everyone to pray and they came in the hospital room. I don't know if you have all of those people at your disposal, but you have us here at the 700 Club Canada. And we wanna pray with you as well. The number's on the screen, 1-855-759-0700. They're for you. Come on, let's pray. Father, I know that there is a, a, a nail-biting moment right now. I feel that, Lord, your child needs that Ephesians 3.20 moment that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly. And I just bind the spirit of fear and I ask you now to release the intercessors and also the answer in Jesus' name. You know, that's why we're here and we enjoy coming into your homes daily. 
And uh, would you consider linking arms with us if you haven't already? And for just $20 a month as our thank you, we'd love to get into your hands when you become a prayer partner and also a partner with us at the 700 Club Canada, the I Wheels of God. You know, when you look at Psalms 91, Pat Robertson teaches us how simple it is to get in touch with God, but also to recognize the power that is unleashed. And it would be such an encouragement if you'd call now. 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by. Call now. Well, up next, a miraculous survival proves the power of prayer. On September 21st, 2011, Tammy Mass got a devastating phone call about her 20-year-old son, Stephen. My sister-in-law was like, meet us at the hospital. Um, Stephen has collapsed. I didn't realize it was that bad. I didn't realize that he had actually died. Earlier that day, Stephen got together with friends for a pickup football game at their high school alma mater in Lufkin, Texas. In the middle of a play, Stephen fell suddenly, face first on the field. Everybody run over there to him. We turned him over slowly. He was foaming out the side of his mouth. Luckily, Miss Jewel, she was a nurse. She was over there walking around in the track. And as I was on my way over, I kept thinking, Lord, please let him be okay. He was cold and he was clammy. And I kept doing compressions. The panic, it was real. Jewel Randall continued CPR until paramedics arrived and found Stephen in full cardiac arrest. On the way to the hospital, they got a pulse. They took me to the room where Stephen was, and he was hooked up to all these machines. I just started begging God not to take my child, to take my life instead. But doctors said there was nothing more they could do for her son. He was lifelighted to Houston Methodist Hospital, where a team of physicians were ready. Dr. Masrur Khan was Stephen's cardiologist. He was comatose. He was intubated, he had a breathing tube, and he was on some drips to get him going. Doctors determined Stephen had been clinically dead without oxygen and a heartbeat for over 20 minutes. Stephen's heart was enlarged and nearly 90% of his brain was severely damaged. If he survived, doctors said he would be in a vegetative state for the rest of his life. It's like someone is just stabbing, you know, you've been stabbed in your heart. You know, that's your baby laying there. It was very tough to see him hooked up to all kinds of wires and machine, you know, and monitors. It was just devastating, but I had faith that he would recover. With no time to waste, the Mask family called on their church, family, and community for prayers and support. Three days went by with no sign of progress. Stephen developed a staph infection in his lungs, but Tammy and her family didn't give up. Um, I felt as if God wanted us to fast. So I, I asked everyone on Facebook, to, would they please fast and pray for Stephen, that God would spare his life and not only spare his life, but restore him, make him whole. And that's when God just started working one miracle after another. After only a day of fasting for Stephen, his lung infection cleared up and Stephen came out of the coma. I was just so, just grateful, just thankful. Just a, a feeling of gratitude and thankfulness to Jesus. By day three of the fast, doctors said his heart was returning to its normal size and functioning at 80%. The doctors, they were like, we don't know what to say. We cannot explain this. His heart is fine. They said, we can't explain it. And I kept saying, it's God. Eventually, doctors performed heart surgery to implant a defibrillator. Then, on October 15, 2011, Stephen was released to begin rehab. Soon, he was speaking. He said, where is Bree, his sister, because I were really, really close. And so when he started talking, that was actually his first words. Any little progress he made writing his name, even though he, he would write his name backwards, 
He had to learn to brush his teeth. He had to learn to do everything. Every step he made was like, it was joy. On November 18th, 2011, nearly two months after his heart attack, Stephen went home. Oh, wow, it felt so good. Because he had been there for 55 days just to have him home and we can take care of him. So as a family, we worked to, to try to help Stephen get to where he needs to be. Stephen doesn't remember what happened that day on the football field, but one part of his recovery is unforgettable. I remember a few of my friends and close friends and classmates, family, all in the hospital in my room praying for me. It made me feel loved. Stephen continued to make steady progress while undergoing therapy for speech and memory. Although he still faces some challenges, Tammy says he is fully functional. They share more of his testimony in their book called Another Slam Dunk. He's the greatest. He was able to heal me like I'm just a new person that's been put on this earth. The power of prayer is real. He wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for God. I know God answers prayer. Prayer works. Prayer works. He wants us to trust him. Even when you can't, you can't see it, it doesn't look good, all he wants us to do is trust him and have faith. This is so awesome. I love this story. Prayer works. Did you see that? Seriously, this kid was dead for 20 minutes, and then he comes back to life. This is truly a miraculous story. You know, I haven't personally witnessed someone rising from the dead, but I have, in a sense, watched dead people come to life so many times in my life. It's true in my own life when we're not when we don't belong to Jesus and we're not following Jesus, we're dead, scripture says. It's not that we're just struggling. Actually, dead people don't struggle. We're dead, we're goners. But salvation brings us to life. That is actually the first and foremost miracle of scripture. But to see a physical healing of someone coming back to life, that just ignites our prayer life, doesn't it? You know, maybe you're watching that and you're like, man, I can't even relate with that. Like that is just, too much. I've never seen anything like that in my life. In fact, maybe you're saying, I have prayed so long and hard for something, and I have not seen God answer. Let me tell you, I, I've been there too. There are seasons when I've prayed so long and hard, and here's a verse that always keeps me going. I want to share it with you. Psalm 27, 14. It's very simple. It says, wait for the Lord, be strong, and take heart, and wait for the Lord. You know, the, the New King James Version, I really love how it words that verse. It says, wait for the Lord, take courage, he, and um, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. You know, maybe that's you today. You want to see miraculous things like people rising from the dead, but right now you just want to get through today. You want some answered prayer in your life. This is a free resource from you. And the scripture I just quoted to you is in there. Can I just encourage you, wait for the Lord. Prayer is powerful. It is real. We call down from the heavenlies and God will restore things that are lost. But sometimes in scripture, it reminds us that we need to persist in prayer. We need to keep trusting God in prayer. So will you call us today? 1-855-759-0700. We will pray with you believing with you that God will finish what he has started. Well, up next, we'll be joined by Pastor Sam Tita to pray with you and all Canadians during our special extended time of prayer. Don't go away. CBN presents The I Wills of God, your path to overcoming fear and anxiety. We're going to talk about some of the incredible promises God has made to his children. In Pat Robertson's newest teaching, you'll discover the I wills of God. I will rescue him, protect him, answer him, be with him in trouble, deliver him, honor him, satisfy him with long life, show him my salvation, and see amazing stories of God's promises in action. What I felt was loved and treasured. God spared my life twice in three days. The good Lord had given me a second chance. Break free from stress and despair. 
the Lord doesn't want you to live in fear, but to know the rewards given to those who love God. The I Wills of God, your path to overcoming fear and anxiety. The latest teaching from Pat Robertson. Available now. Welcome back. And today is not only a day of prayer, because no prayer, no power. Some prayer, some power. Much prayer, much power. Much power. And we've got Sam Tita with Prayer Wave Canada. Yes. Wow. You know, I'm so excited about what God is doing inside of your ministry and also in your family. And, uh, you know, with our week of prayer, we want to thank everyone for sending in your prayer requests, number one. But also uh, that you're not just sending them in, but you're praying with us. Because we believe it's so powerful when a whole nation comes up in prayer. Amen. Right? That's where the prayer wave really begins to move. And, and you know, on this day, too, uh, as we're, we're focusing on more individual things, what I sense is people uh, and, and a number of the requests that we've received are under extreme pressure. There's a lot of challenges coming. A lot of challenges in families that mm -hmm. we're reading, right, on these prayer requests, yes. in marriages, yes. divisions in families, lots of anxiety. Mm -hmm. What do you see, Sam? Well, this is actually what we're seeing in our ministry right. as well um, with, with the prayer wave because we have individuals who's uh, they're dealing, we're dealing with things in our nation today, Lori and, and Brian, that we've never dealt with before. Mm -hmm. Terrorism, for instance, is something that we used to pray for other mm -hmm. nations right. about, but it's on our shores now. Mm -hmm. People are anxious. I can't go to a mall without praying and covering the place with the blood of Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. Stuff that I never used to think about right. before. Right. Uh, parents are uh, abandoned by younger children yeah. because they're pursuing careers and all those things. So right. there's a lot of anxiety, yeah. you're right. You know, when you, start, you talk about pursuing careers, Sam, uh, in banking, mm -hmm. you remember uh, being in that environment and there was a lot of stress in order to not only close the deal and bring those yeah. things in. What are some of the stresses that you find right now that are on Bay Street and right across Canada in that, in that uh, uh, nine to five window? It's, it's, Brian, it's worse than it used to be. I was a young stockbroker. About the time when my marriage failed, it wasn't just the things that we were dealing with at home, but I was the, one of the youngest managers in, in, in a brokerage that was exploding. And just the, 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 the desire to keep up and be yeah. on top of your right. game mm. and to get that next promotion, it's, it's overwhelming. Right. Yes. And, and it causes a lot of stress. Yes. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that, that that was a contributing factor in, in the downfall of my marriage. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think yeah. that's exactly what people are dealing with right now. Yeah. You've got a verse, Lori, yeah. that God really just illuminated. Absolutely. I, I've just felt this, um, the breakdown of the family mm -hmm. from the pressures of work and society. And I just want to share, God just tells us as a nation. Yes. He says, God opposes the proud. Mm -hmm but he shows favor to the humble. Come on. And Canada, we need to hear this. Humble yourself before the Lord. And there's a great promise. He will lift you up. And the verse doesn't even end with that. It says, cast all your anxiety. Cast all your care on him because he cares for you. God sees our anxiety in our country and he wants us to humble ourselves before him so he can give us great freedom. Well, you know, at, at some time we got to pray and that's why we're here. And I want to thank you for that. But I've, I've got Irene here and she says, um, you know, I'm under attack uh, by Satan and, and I want to I want to be covered. I need to be covered under the blood. Uh, it has to stop now. Yeah. That's yeah. what she's saying. Yeah. I don't know. What do, you, what do you have over there? I have uh, Josephine says she wants, she's, she wants us to pray for salvation for all of her family, especially mm -hmm. for her girls who are on drugs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And I've got a husband who's in the hospital with complications and a wife who is trying to, you know, endure this time of, of illness. Why don't you lead family. us in that, Lori? And, and, and if you have sent yours in, know that we're praying for that. We're laying hands on it. Even if we didn't call your name, know that you're being prayed for. Now, let's come into agreement yes, together. Yes, come on, let's yes. pray. Amen. Well, Lord Jesus, we agree together in prayer. First of all, we pray and gather in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the yes. one and only Lord Jesus of Nazareth, who Amen. died on the cross for us, who conquer death and Satan and sin itself. We come to you, Jesus, on your authority, and we ask that your kingdom come, yes. Father, and your will be done in our nation. Amen. And would you bring great humility, 
great humility to the hearts of people because yes, yes. when we are humble, when we repent, when we Amen. turn to you, you lift us up yes. and we can cast all of our anxiety and care on you. Yes. So we bring you these requests and yeah. I bring this dear sister who whose husband's in the hospital struggling right now, would you bring healing in Jesus' in name Jesus. and strength to her and the family as yes. they go through this journey. May they see the power of the living Christ yes. today, Lord Jesus, yes. we ask this. Amen. Come on, Amen. Sam. Amen. Go ahead, Sam. Amen. Well, Father, Lord, we just raised this nation, uh, mm -hmm. Canada, before you, Lord. Yeah. Uh, we were at a, a prayer breakfast yesterday where we sang our anthem all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. And we know that from the hearts of our fathers who founded this nation, Canada is devoted and dedicated to the God of heaven. Amen. Father, we just raise this nation to you, Lord. Uh, reach out to your people. Raise up the yeah. church that we would take our rightful places in this nation and, and preach the gospel and, and see salvations and, and just bring people back to you, Lord. Yes. That we would yes. repent and come to the God of Lord. grace and love yes. Yes. And, and, and be able to just experience your goodness, Lord. Yes. Father, we thank you. Thank we you. thank you, Lord, yes. that you're touching these people. Even yes. now, yes. there is no distance in this spirit. So, Lord, mm -hmm. send your spirit yes. to reach them where they are now in yes. Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. And, Amen. Father, I touch and agree with the prayers that have been prayed, but also with our yes. viewers, and we mm -hmm. touch and agree and declare now a prayer covering over them. Yes. Your word says in Isaiah 61 and 7, Instead of shame, you will receive double honor. Instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion and their land, and they shall possess double for an everlasting joy. Amen. So I'm asking now that you would drive back this force of darkness and that you would reveal that there is a greater purpose and plan for their life. And the greater the adversity, the greater the reward. So now we unleash now this prayer in the blood of Jesus. Yes. Lord, in the nine to five window over those bankers and over those men and women that Lord are even now in our education system and those that are Lord just sitting in those places and those Starbucks across this nation. We mm -hmm. ask now for the covering of your spirit yes. and the raising as we release the spirit of adoption yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. But Lord, we believe now is the time for Canada. Yes. And we call it so in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, you know, I, I, tell, I tell you, I get energized every time we pray. <laughs> Sam, prayer wave, Sam Tita, thank, thank you for you. being thank with us. And we much. thank you also for being with us as well. And we can't wait to be with you again. So until next time, keep praying. God bless. Take care. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca or write to us at Christian Broadcasting Associates, Incorporated. The 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S4T4. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.